So, uh, tell me, have you always lived in Cobb County? No, I have not. How did you end up here with your family? Uh, I actually, um, before this, lived in Seattle, Washington. Oh. I moved there for work and lived there for about three years, and that's where I met my husband. So we, once we got married, then I got a job offer here, and my job moved us here to Cobb County. Gotcha. So did not have to, like, it was a decision for your job, not for his? Correct. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Was there a reason that you chose Cobb County At over cost, others? Yes, the cost of living was very good, and um, the realtor that we were working with, um, she kind of specialized in this area, and she sold it to us as far as just great neighborhoods, good schools, cost of living, um, all that stuff. Gotcha. That's cool that you lived in Seattle, though. I yeah. would not have thought that. It's so far. Yeah, it is. And I moved from, I was living in Ohio before that, so it was a really oh, okay. far away move from where I grew up. Gotcha. So you yeah. lived in Ohio first, mm -hmm. and yes. how long did you live there? I lived there my whole life, all the way through college. Okay. Until I was 21, and then I moved to Seattle. Okay, gotcha. For three years, and then I actually moved to Columbus, Ohio for a year, moved back to Seattle, and then moved here. Oh, wow. Gotcha. Yeah. So that's a long, yes. <laughs> long yeah. history from kind of, before. Yeah, back and forth. <laughs> and around how long have you been living in Cobb then? Uh, well, we got married in 2005, and we moved here. I always have to look. I have a ring with the date. So we got married in July of 2005, and then I got the job offer in December of 2005. So essentially from, let's say, 2006 until now. So what is that? 12 years? Mm -hmm. so, that is yeah, quite a bit. A pretty long time, yeah. And we've been here the whole, we've lived in Cobb County the whole time that we've lived in the state. Gotcha. And mm -hmm. so are you a homeowner here or do you rent your home? Yes, we are homeowners. Okay, cool. Yeah. And uh, can you describe the type of structure or house that you live in? Uh, it's a single family. Okay. Yes. Two story or two story with a basement. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. It's cool that you lived like on the West Coast. Oh, I yeah. was like, it was so much fun. It really, and I was in my early twenties, so just being single and working and being in this awesome city where there was so many different things to do, and it really was amazing. We actually thought we were going to stay there until. Um, this job came up and my husband was like, well, you should think of, you should think about it. Mm -hmm. And, but we just, we loved it out there. And we actually had his family. Um, he had a couple aunts and uncles that were married with kids that lived out there. So we did have some family out there, but for the most part, you know, we were just young and working and it was super fun. What did you like about it there so um, much? Or like compared to here at least? Well, I think definitely the landscape because the, we had the ocean. There were rivers and lakes. Um, you had the mountains. And I traveled for my job. So I would go to Alaska sometimes. Um, I would travel to Oregon. I traveled to Montana. Mm -hmm. All those Iowa. So, um... I had kind of been to, or not Iowa, Idaho. Um, so I got to go to all these different states around there that were oh, really, man. really beautiful. So just the landscape was amazing. I loved it. What kind of job did you have that allowed you to travel so much like that? Uh, well, I started off as a sales and marketing rep in a tra management training program. So I covered Lowe's stores for Newell Rubbermaid was mm -hmm. the company. And I had a seven or eight stores that I was in charge of just maintaining and trying to increase sales and developing relationships. And then after that, I got promoted into a training position to train new reps on a specific product line. And then after that, I got promoted to be a manager. So once I was a manager, then I covered seven different states because I had reps in all of those areas. So then I would travel to work with those reps and that's how I got to so much of the northwest okay that's cool that's cool yeah. yeah and the northwest is really neat it's different than california and there's like different kinds of west coast mm -hmm. you know the northwest versus. oh really oh yeah how would yeah. you describe the difference there um i think it's the northwest is a little more grainy and earthy and um 
you know, people don't care as much about their appearance and they're not shallow in the way that when you go some places in California, everyone's all about like how they look and mm-hmm. everybody tries to look perfect and has, you know, Botox and all this stuff. And in the Northwest, people are just like more who, whoever they are, like everybody's different and it's people embrace being different and unique. And that was one thing I really loved about it was just that people, you could kind of be whoever you wanted to be and people weren't judgmental and things like that. Did you like living there better than you like living here? Um, well, I think if it, because I'm older and I have a family and kids, this makes sense to live here. Mm -hmm. But I think if you took me when I was 24 and asked me that question here versus there, I would say Seattle, like all the way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. (laughs) Um, do you have rooftop solar for your home? We do not. Um, could you tell me why you don't have rooftop solar? Was the decision made for you or um, did you make that decision consciously? We've always bought houses that were already built. We've never built a new house. So any house, we, and this is our second house. Both houses that we bought did not have solar power. Okay. So I guess you could say that decision was made for us. Gotcha. So you didn't think... Like, did you ever think about installing solar or was it just because, oh, the house is already built, like we didn't think about installing? Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Um, If you had the option, would you put rooftop solar on your home? Yes. I mean, I think absolutely. Especially with the days of sunshine. One thing when we were moving from Seattle to here and we were looking at statistics Mm -hmm. for different things and the weather... um, we read that on average, Atlanta gets 90 more days of sunshine than Seattle. Oh, wow. So as far as sunshine and solar power, a place like Atlanta would make sense, I think, because mm-hmm. we do get more sunshine on average than other places in the country. Could you tell me some more reasons why you personally would or would not want to adopt solar? Um, I think I would because it would save money and it's also environmentally friendly. Um, it's, we're not relying on resources like we do currently where we're using up natural resources. Um, and it's something that's always there. Um, we have solar powered lights for our walkway up to our front oh, okay. stoop. So we have a couple solar things here and there. And um, I mean, on a scale... As far as being scalable, those are small scale things, but you know, I definitely wouldn't be opposed to using it for larger scale energy use too. Gotcha. Uh, in your opinion, in general, what are some pros and cons of getting solar that are like not economic? I would say pros would be that I would feel like I was doing something good for the environment. Um, a con would be that it's not. It doesn't seem like it would be one hundred percent reliable all the time. Gotcha. Because I don't know how it's stored. You know, does it store it up and then it's just there? Or is it something that's, you know, you have to have sunshine or whatever more frequently? I don't know the ins and outs of that. Mm -hmm. Do you think people in this area or in Georgia in general would generally agree with your opinion? Or do they think differently than you? Uh, I think it depends on where you are. I think if you were in side the perimeter Mm -hmm. and in more um, progressive industrial hip areas where people probably think about things like that more I think opinions would be different than maybe out here in the suburbs where you know people are thinking more about what's gonna be the you know cheapest way for me to get my energy because I have a family to support and you know my money's going out the door for this this and this so I think it would be geographical okay so I'm gonna give you the map of the US and on there label however you want um, just where you think people have the most rooftop solar energy on their homes okay and you can just circle things too if you wanted okay. to like you don't even have to like be like oh yeah. I know what state this is yeah. well I'm just thinking of like in Wyoming, mm-hmm. um, just from different magazines that I've read, and my parents have some friends out there, and being out there for work, um, people are much more in tune with nature, and I could see um, just the whole state of Wyoming being somewhere that they would use. Probably use solar power. Um, this is kind of just a funny, I would say, like, because 
they have 24 hours of darkness mm-hmm. in some times of the year, and then they have 24 hours of light. So In Alaska. Yeah. So it could be a good, really great candidate mm-hmm. for solar, depending on the energy stores, or if they have, like, something they use during winter versus summer. So. Okay, cool. Is this good? Like, are you done labeling? I think so. Take your time. If you want to label more, you're good. Yeah, I mean, pro- I would probably... Texas. Okay, cool. So, could you tell me a bit about why you chose the areas you did? What was your reasoning behind it? Mm-hmm. Okay, so when I worked in consumer goods, um, consumer packaged goods, and knowing my husband's in- industry, um, he also works in consumer goods, um, these were always the areas where we had the highest volume as far as sales. And it's because these are the areas where people have a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you look at like the Northwest, California, Arizona, and I also circled some just because they have a lot of daylight as well, like Arizona and actually Nevada would probably be another candidate for that. Um, Texas, Florida, the Northeast, and then also like Chicago area. So I kind of circled it around states and cities where there are people in Alaska, just because of the reason I said with the how much sunlight they get Mm -hmm. um, throughout the year, certain times of the year. But I would just say people with more money, um, and this isn't true everywhere, but, you know, tend to maybe try, they're willing to try different things or, um, you know, kind of explore things that that would cost more. So I guess I'm just looking at it more from an economic standpoint. Um, and, And the West Coast, too, and the East Coast, New York, these two areas, people are more progressive generally um, and usually open to new ideas. And there's a lot of people that come from other countries that live in these areas. And so I think it's just more progressive um, as a whole, kind of up here and here. Gotcha. And I realized you circled uh, or you labeled Seattle. Yeah. So did you, um, so when you lived in Seattle, did you notice more solar power there? Um, I mean, I don't know if I was really paying attention to it when I was in my 20s, um, but I definitely think um, wind, I remember that there was, um, you know, like wind energy out on the West Coast was something that was more prevalent than I've never, you never hear about that or see anything around here, you know, this area. So I think it just, maybe that's what stuck in my mind. It's just that there were you know, people were doing things differently than you would see, like, in the Midwest and the more conservative states. Gotcha. So more um, alternative energy. Yes. So but a different say, kind. Right, alternative energy. But I can't say 100%, like, yes, people were definitely doing solar power. But you would see a lot more of, like, solar panels um, than I ever see here, for sure. Oh, so you did see more mm-hmm. solar there? Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool, cool. Um so in general, what do you think the um, what makes the community or the people from these different communities so different from the people from Cobb County or from Georgia in general? Um, well, I think there's a lot of different layers to it, but um, I think as a whole, people that live in Cobb County and Georgia are um, just more traditional, more traditionalist, more conservative. Um, and this is just one funny example, but... So when we lived in Seattle, there was a limit on the amount of trash that you could throw away. You were only allowed to throw away, um, like, whatever would fit in your bin, Mm -hmm. your trash bin. And it was really small compared to the trash bins here in Georgia. And recycling, the recycling bin was, like, the size of the trash bins here. So it was reversed. Like, everybody recycled Mm -hmm. and... And there was a limit, and you couldn't put, like, extra trash or anything like that. Um, And you would get charged for it. Mm -hmm. To where, when we moved here, and we were throwing away stuff when we moved into our house, we called the trash company, and they're like, oh, yeah, it's, it's like, unlimited. Like, you can have unlimited amounts of trash. And it just wasn't something that was really top of mind or, you know, as a community that people are as concerned about as in Seattle. There were, like, strict things in place about waste and conserving, you know, making sure you weren't, you know, contributing to the landfills and and things like that. So that just, that experience makes me think that 
people here, it just, we kind of are the last ones to kind of catch on to things like solar power. Gotcha. So do you think that that politics or the government plays a factor in the different areas like local government? Yes. Yeah, I would say so. Do you think that there are other major factors that take place that are also non-economic that would make our communities different or that people would think differently? Yes. So yeah. can you name some if you can think of them? Um, you know, I think that if you look at a place like Texas, mm-hmm. you know, there is a lot of oil in Texas and oil is big business and big money. So I guess, I don't know if that's considered economic or not, but, um, so, you know, in Texas, you're probably not going to get people that are going to be as pro solar power because they're relying on people using fossil fuels and that's part of their livelihood and their industry. And, you know, so, um, so yeah, I would say just where corporations are based and what their interests are as far as being successful and profitable plays a role. And then the influence that they have on politicians and local government in the area. Gotcha. But you did happen to label Texas here. Yeah. So yeah. what was your reasoning for that when you when you were thinking, like when you were labeling it, yeah. why did you I mean, I think Texas? initially I labeled Texas because I know there's people that have a lot of money in Texas. And so I was kind of going with the economic um, philosophy that I was using to circle all the other ones. But thinking about like the amount of oil um, and fossil fuel produced out of Texas, I probably would change my mind actually take Texas off um, as an early adopter of of solar. Okay. And was there a reason you circled Florida as well? Um, the same reason, just um, because of my experience in the consumer goods industry and just looking at, you know, where people have money to spend okay. and more disposable income. Uh, you know, I think just like I said before that, anything that's going to get adopted, it usually happens on the like outer West coast and East coast of the country and then works its way in, um, in all industries. So I'm just making an assumption that Mm -hmm. that would be hold true for the same thing like solar power. Okay. We're going to do pretty much the same exercise that we did with the U S map. So if, uh, you could label on there where you perceive the, that, uh, people would have the most solar power adoption. Hmm. This is this is a lot harder to, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. to think about um, because if looking at it from a land perspective, um, people that live don't live in concentrated urban areas have more land. Um, but I don't even know like if solar power if you need more land or more space or do you just put it like on your roof, like, do you really need to have that in order to have solar power? I really don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, if we're Um, just talking about rooftop solar power, where would you think people would have it? Okay. Um, I mean, I would say probably in these, like more the urban areas than anywhere else. And then, I mean, I would just, just because I have friends that live in Athens and knowing that the college is there, Mm -hmm. um, I feel that maybe Athens is more progressive um, because there are educators that are there and there's research. I mean, just like what you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Um, So, I mean, I would probably circle Athens and then same thing for Savannah. It's a very progressive small town with a college. So again, you know, you have people that, that could be more open to using things that are a little more progressive. Okay, cool. And not so much for any other town. <laughs> <laughs> so not Small southern town. Georgia. No, not so much. <laughs> so is this like, it kind of looks like rural versus urban here with what you circle a little mm-hmm. bit. Okay. Yeah. Um, could you tell me a bit about what makes the people from the places that you circled so different from where we live? Well, I mean, I think... I mean, that's kind of where we live. Right. I mean, I would say, you know, Kennesaw could definitely be considered to be in this circle. Mm -hmm. Um, Even though... Yeah, because, I mean, Roswell and Marietta... I would say Kennesaw... I would include Kennesaw in that because it's anywhere that's, like, within an hour of downtown Atlanta. Okay. You know... So why would you think that people, I guess that it would include from where we live, 
would have the most solar power adoption. Probably just because of the influence of living so close to a large city. So, um, you know, I think that we, even though we're out in the suburbs, we still have the influence of a big city with, you know, things that are, you know, Atlanta is a large city with a lot of corporations and we have a lot of people from all over the world. So I think that we do have um, the right mix for, you know, but then if you look at, if you look at Atlanta versus the West Coast cities and some of the other cities that I've been to, you know, we have transportation issues still and a lot of people still drive cars and people don't use public transportation. They, they do in the way they do in like Chicago or Seattle. So, I mean, you know, that's why this, this is kind of a hard map for me to look at just because as a state, I don't feel that we're very progressive when it comes to things like, you know, renewable energy and, and things like that. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if I really would have maybe circled anything because I didn't circle it here. You know what I'm saying? Right. So like if I'm forced to circle somewhere, like, okay, which, what would be the most progressive, the early adopters, it would probably be these cities, but really as a state, I don't really believe that. If that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think that people from the places that you circle have different mindsets from the people from the rest of Georgia that you didn't circle? Yes. And I would say my biggest two reasons for that would be that there are colleges here. Um, and so there, there are new ideas, there is research. Um, you know, there are people that come from all over the world that work for these colleges. So therefore it makes it a progressive city. Um, and because Atlanta is such a big city and you do have, you know, people from all over all walks of life, um, and different experiences, I think when you get out to these other cities and I I have friends who have family members that live in Macon, um, I used to travel to Columbus because we had a distribution facility there. Mm -hmm. So I've been exposed to the smaller cities, um, and towns within Georgia and, you know, it's, it's like stepping back in time sometimes when you go to these places, which is, can be kind of cool mm-hmm. because life is simpler and more basic. And, but, you know, also when it comes to progressive ideas, like, Hey, let's everyone do solar power. You know, I think those towns, it would take a lot longer to get people to kind of buy into it. Gotcha. Um, since you did circle the, the area that our community is in, have you seen people here who have solar on their rooftops? No. I don't think yeah. ever. <laughs> it's so interesting because, like, you would think that people would have them here because it's so progressive. Like, it's right. a big city. It's right. like everything should be right. here. But everyone... And we have the largest airport in the world. So you would think, okay, we're the lar- one of the largest yeah. airports in the U.S., you know, that we would have things like that. But we don't, I think, because it's the South, and the South is very traditional when it comes to certain ideas. Gotcha. Is yeah. that does that play into the politics thing again, the conservative uh, mindset? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um so what about you mentioned your close friends a little bit. So, um what about most of your close friends in Georgia? Do you, do they have solar on their rooftops? No. Could you take a guess as to why they would or would not want it for their rooftops? I think it's um, just something that's not readily available or, um, you know, discussed as a community. So it's not top of mind. Um, and And we are in the suburbs where people are focused on different things than, you know, looking at. Which, you know, even when it comes to like hybrid cars. You do see a lot more hybrid cars on the road today than maybe you saw 10 years ago. Like my husband had a Prius 10 years ago and you would see them here and there, but now it's, you see it everywhere, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's a lot more commonplace. So I think once some people start doing it and it starts to become more commonplace, then it would spread, you know, but we don't have that first initial kind of step being taken. Or even offer it, really. I mean, you know, there's no companies out there that are trying to sell solar power or help push solar power around here. Gotcha. But I also, I don't know, I feel like sometimes I'm like, 
completely out of the loop because I'm raising three kids and I don't always, I'm not always up on the latest news and things like that. So, you know, <laughs> I'm just making assumptions. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, from just thinking of the perspectives of the people that are close to you or just people that you know around you, what do you think some of the pros and cons that are non-economic, like what would they see in terms of that for like wanting it for their own rooftops? Um, I think people do want to feel like they're doing good, um, and to feel good about that I'm helping the environment or I'm saving energy or, um, you know, not taking things from the earth that is not a renewable energy source. So I think all of those kind of good Samaritan bullet points would come into play. Gotcha. Do you think there would be any non-economic barriers to having people want to adopt solar that you know of, like that of people that you know? I think maybe just the inconvenience of having to get it. So, I mean, if you look at like, I'm just trying to relate it to something I do, do know about, like cable, you know, everyone kept cable forever and ever because it was convenient and it was easy and it was available and the cable companies just took advantage and charge more and more and more money well then somebody started to figure out like hey I'm just not going to have cable and I'm just going to figure it out a different way and then a bunch of people started doing it and now it's like the cable companies are in big trouble because so many people are like no I'm not going to pay for this anymore um so I think but that's I guess that's kind of an economic factor because it's still related yeah you know um, that also has to do with uh, new ideas so like the progressive behavior I guess yes yeah definitely for sure and I guess that's where I was kind of going with that was that you know when something I've just noticed living in this area that you have to get those early adopters and then once they do something and it starts to become mainstream then everyone's like oh that's a great idea. I'm not going to have, I'm going to cut cable and I'm not going to have cable anymore, but you have to have those early adopters to kind of, you know, so I guess just the conservative ideals and just, you know, doing things the way they were always done is probably a hurdle. Mm -hmm. Do you think growing up or not growing up, but like living in Seattle influenced your relationship with the environment? Yes, I would say a hundred percent. But since I've been here, I've probably taken steps backwards okay because I have kids and I'm more about convenience and um you know I think I've kind of I've kind of gotten away from that and I'm not as mindful of it as I probably was a good like 10-15 years ago you know like I buy plastic straws and my kids use plastic straws and I use plastic straws and like in Seattle I would have been like well I'm you know not going to use straw because it doesn't you know, decompose and it goes into a landfill and it just sits there and, you know, so I've probably regressed since I've lived here. Gotcha. That's interesting. Unfortunately. Though. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll make up for it later <laughs> so, when our carbon footprint has gone down when we don't have three kids in the house. Yeah. But. So do you think because of just like geographically where you've lived, your mindset has had to change or is it also just because of lifestyle and purposes and stuff? Like I think that? both. I mean, I think, you know, in, environmental factors and community factors influence my behavior. Um, but then also just conveniences and lifestyle, um, you know, having a growing family and just wanting to do whatever's easiest.